Jill and I just got out of seeing The Flash, and I want to say, first off, we're going to have a few minutes that are not spoilers. Mm -hmm. We will tell you when we start to get into spoilers. Anything I show here is stuff from the trailers. And since this movie is not out yet, I'm not going to be showing probably full-on clips unless I have access to a few on YouTube. I also want to say really quick that we are talking about The Flash. This is a character who is a man in the movie. So when I refer to Ezra, people always get mad at me about it on both sides. I just try and be nice. You also want to talk about the character Barry Allen without being hogtied and crucified. <laughs> right. So I just want to point that out because there's always people in the comments getting mad about that around this actor. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that big of a deal. That's just my opinion. Yeah. I want to say for spoiler free for me, and I think for you, Jill, and I'll let you talk too, this movie is a mess. I liked it. I did not love it. I did not hate it. There were parts of the movie that really impacted me. Mm -hmm. I cried twice during this movie, but there were a couple of things that really deeply kind of hit me in the, in the gut. But I will say that obviously in the trailer, they talk about Flash's relationship with his mom. That is something that actually really kind of cut deep on me because it was, I thought, done very emotionally. I thought Ezra Miller's acting was actually good in those scenes. And I thought that the characters themselves in the movie, I liked all of them, mm -hmm. but it didn't feel like this movie was committing to anything. No, it definitely didn't commit to anything. While I was watching this movie, I went, hey, this might be the best movie in the DC. Oh, never mind. I was thinking, this is going in a great direction. Oh no, who, what, what happened? And, there and then were... something else would happen. You'd go, actually, actually, I think we could save this. And then you couldn't. Yeah. And I do want to say too, going into, before we get to spoilers, if you're expecting this movie to set up a new DC Universe timeline... It doesn't. It doesn't. If you're expecting this to be a transition into a new, you know, movie universe, it's not. It kind of just feels like a weird full stop or comma and like a dark. semicolon yeah semicolon it feels like a semicolon yeah it feels like they could revisit the dceu if they wanted mm -hmm. like the door is left open enough on it that they could there were originally plans under the walter hamada led dc which I, I, look there's a lot of things they did i don't like too i actually really liked the Zack snyder trilogy of movies and then i liked a lot of other stuff too the suicide squad i really liked Wonder Woman, I really liked Shazam. So yeah. there, there was a lot of stuff I liked on both sides of it. There were a lot of reports during early screenings and during early shooting and stuff like this, that this movie was gonna set up things like a Batman Beyond movie with Michael Keaton. Mm -hmm. It was going to set up that canceled Leslie Grace Batgirl movie with mm -hmm. Michael Keaton in it. You Which know? I'm actually kind of disappointed that they're not doing. When you watch this movie, there's a very clear direction. Kind of like when you, you bite into a cookie and you're like, yes, this is an m, m cookie. But then you get like more towards the middle of the cookie and then there's like some weird raisins in there and some other like weird flavors and you're like, where's the M&Ms? What the heck's going on? It's like it very obviously started out as one thing where they were gonna take these characters, they were gonna have them be the new characters for the Justice League, they were gonna have this be the new DCEU. And then halfway through they were like, no. I don't think I'd want to do that anymore, but we already filmed all of this and we don't have enough budget to just refilm all of it. So let's keep that part, but just change everything at the end to make it kind of sort of almost make sense. Yes. But let's just let the DCEU rot. But I just want to say overall, I think it was a mess. I wanted to love the movie. Mm -hmm. I went into the movie wanting to love it. I wanted it to be a bookend to the DCEU where it was like, okay, we're moving on, but hey, you know what? Here's a swan song. And now we're going to keep some characters and do some new things. You know, I went into the movie loving it for partway through, too. Mm -hmm. And then it just kind of went downhill. I want to add in as the end of Spoiler Free, I loved this version of Supergirl. Every moment that Sasha was on screen, I loved her. I wanted her to get her own movie. I'm very disappointed that in the reboot, it's going to be a different actress. I thought she was fantastic, amazing. I thought that they could have done a lot more with her. Keaton stole the show in every scene where he was on screen. It's not like Barry was just uninteresting or sucked or anything. It's just Michael Keaton was very clearly having such a fun time coming back to play Batman. Those two characters, in a lot of ways, make the movie worth watching, even if you don't like Ezra Miller, even if you don't care about The Flash. I thought they were great, and I really do believe the original plan was to do more with these characters. I'm just kind of disappointed overall because I don't really think the movie was what they sold it as during its production. 
This is your warning to get out of here if you don't want spoilers. This is like one of the most mixed bag movies I've ever seen, and I left Age of Extinction for Transformers and Thor Love and Thunder thinking, I really like that. Okay, my standards are not the highest in the world. I have never left a movie having both really enjoyed it and really disliked it at the same time. But this movie was just like a roller coaster of emotions and not in and a good quality. way. The CGI was not good. The it CGI was, a, was really bad. Parts of it were looked great. They're, I was willing to overlook the CGI if the movie was good. Yes. But yeah. it wasn't the, good CGI. I just don't know how to feel. Mm -hmm. I don't I feel like I should not like it, but I left liking it, but not loving it. I feel like we left liking some parts and disliking other parts. Yeah. And I, I honestly think my biggest problem with it, they introduced Michael Keaton Batman. They introduced Sasha as like the new Superman of the universe, obviously Supergirl. And I thought that was really, really cool. I was really excited about that. She's only in like the third act of the movie. And I had heard one of our friends on, on Twitter talk about this and be like, yeah, she's only in the third act of the movie, even though she was really good. And I was like, I hope that's just not true. I hope this person's just pulling my leg. They were right. Yeah. She's only in the third act of the movie. And even though she's really good, it seems like they cut out most of her scenes. And it seems like she was supposed to matter more than she did. Because they made a huge deal of her, like, introduction when she shows up and she's, like, doing her powers for the first time and such. I don't know if Sasha was supposed to be the new Superman in the Hamada-verse type thing. Like, But it certainly there... felt like she was supposed to be. It seemed like there was a plan to make Keaton the new Batman. Mm -hmm. which we know there was because and, of the Batgirl movie yep and other things reported mm -hmm. and it seems to me like there was a plan to make her the new Supergirl uh -huh. and just to make that their new Superman and yep. it seemed like they were setting up a new Justice League because the whole point of the movie is Flash went back in time he changed the past it also changed the future and the past before it we also do know that there was the laughing bag which matched up perfectly with the end obviously of Batman 1989 mm -hmm. and so there was all kinds of stuff matching up with that universe but then in a way they also do a lot of weird stuff with it where they're like actually in that universe General Zod would have shown up too they played really fast and loose with their rules on time travel in this movie yeah because they made some events act like they were fixed points of time that couldn't be changed but then other other points that should have been fixed points of time were able to be changed Yes, and there was also a lot of weird stuff going on with causal loops. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of stuff going on of like, you created me, but I created you, but I did this, but it's a circle. But then that stuff is kind of confusing because of it all only happens because of time changing. But then by the time the movie ends and time has barely changed, it still doesn't make sense because not to jump all over the place here, but they leave with George Clooney as Batman. Yeah. At the that end. That ending was really weird and out of place. It, A lot of this movie felt like Alice in Wonderland to me. Parts of it are enjoyable, but a lot of what's going on is just fucking weird. No, that's actually a perfect example, Jill. The original, you know, Lewis Carroll or whatever, Alice in Wonderland, it had a lot of weird shit to say, but it had something to say. Uh-huh. And then they made a movie about it, and I think Disney lost a lot of that in translation. Yeah. That's what this felt like to me, was the original Flashpoint had a point and a lot of things to say. Uh -huh. And this movie was able to convey some of those things. But, but it lost a lot of it along the way. It lost a lot of it along the way. And I really think that that's because it doesn't end up being Flashpoint. It ends up just being reset. Yeah. You know, they, they build this movie up as if it's a Flashpoint. You were saying it's going to start a new universe. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. By the end of the movie, everything is back to the same, except Barry exonerates his dad. He proves his dad didn't kill his mom. Mm -hmm. And he makes it so that everything seems fixed. But then obviously George Clooney gets out of the car and this is supposed to be really funny. And it's like, oh, the Batman from Batman and Robin is Batman now. But then there is a post credit scene where he actually talks to Aquaman and he's like, oh, I went to all these different places. All these different Bruces were all different. And you and I had different opinions on what this scene meant. Yeah, it kind of seemed like he was talking about stuff that we didn't get to see in the movie. And you said you thought the implication of it was that he went to a bunch of other different universes to try and fix the weird George Clooney thing. And then once he had everything fixed, he went back to the normal DCEU timeline and was just hanging out with Aquaman and telling him about it. And the reason I thought that was because he specifically says, hey, I live over here. So he knows that he's the only Flash, you know, in that timeline. Mm -hmm. 
and he has his his apartment back in the same place and everything. Mm -hmm. So to me, it didn't seem like he just left George Clooney as Batman. It seems like he fixed it. But to me, it kind of just felt like a weird out of place throw in scene that didn't make it clear whether or not he fixed that or not. And it's like they don't know how to write levity a lot of the yeah. times. Like so and they they did a lot of levity in scenes that undermined the point of it. And I think you pointed out that end credit scene was like that. It's like you tried to make a joke out of everything that happened, but it was a very serious movie. And it was a joke that I didn't really get personally. And also Jason Momoa, even though I really like him, his Aquaman being extremely drunk in that scene and him slurring his speech and just falling down a bunch was incredibly distracting and detracting away from everything that The Flash had to say. Mm -hmm. That I had a hard time focusing on what was coming out of The Flash's mouth because I was too busy thinking, what is wrong with Aquaman? But it's weird because that flies in the face of who Aquaman is after the first Aquaman movie. Yeah. You know, he starts out as a drunk. And he's this, you know, out of place guy when Batman finds him. Mm -hmm. Batman gives him a bit of a purpose. Then he's still a mess. Then he finds his purpose in Aquaman. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like it fit who Arthur Curry became. It didn't feel like he got his character development correct. It felt like he was pre, like, like they picked Arthur Curry up out of the timeline from before Ben Affleck's Batman ever found him when he was yeah. a drunk yeah. and dropped him back in and now he's Aquaman but he still has an alcohol problem yeah. and like can't take anything seriously. It was really like, bizarre. And he was trying to have I guess like kind of a drinking contest with Flash because Flash said like I told you I can't get drunk because of my metabolism. Mm -hmm. So like I get it was supposed to be like a fun thing but it didn't fit who he was. It also felt like he, they only threw him in there in that end scene because they had a couple of seconds of Wonder Woman in it and because it kind of seemed like they wanted to have a couple of seconds of every Justice League character just to be able to be like, hey, it was kind of like a Justice League movie. Well, and that's the thing is the cameos didn't matter in this movie. So no, of, no, they didn't matter at all. A lot of people were mad at the cameos. There's a lot of dead actors who uh -huh. are put in this movie as cameos. With CGI. And the CGI sucks. Now, I don't care as long as they got the permission of those estates or actors' families or whatever, uh -huh. because uh -huh. you know what? That means that those people wanted that likeness in there. You know, as long as you have the permission of those people, is it weird? Yeah. It it's was weird. very bizarre to see. It's weird. I would rather you just use archive footage. Like there yeah. is archive footage of Christopher Reeve as Superman and it's awesome. It's called four Superman movies that were like fun. And they're not all they, good, but they're fun. Instead they made them look like uncanny valley cartoon characters. Right. And that's the part to me that was weird. If you just put them in there, I don't care. But almost every cameo in this movie felt pointless. Mm -hmm. Wonder Woman shows up for no reason. No, she's she, in the movie for... I'm going to be honest, less than a minute. I feel like they only left her in there to sell an action figure. Yeah. That and felt it, like the only reason she was still in there. I think she was supposed to be in the movie more and they cut all her scenes. Same with Ben. Yeah. I think he was supposed to be too. Yeah. Same with, actually, I think Michael Keaton maybe was going to be in this movie more. And Sasha. Because it really felt like, to me, they were leading up to the whole new universe being her being like the new Superman, Michael Keaton being the new Batman, he's going to train Batgirl, and then Batgirl's going to hang out with the Flash, and they're going to create like a new Justice League. And then there's going to be a Batman Beyond eventually, because yeah. Keaton's getting old. It felt half-baked to me. First of all, there are a lot of things that I enjoyed, even though some parts of them didn't make sense. Like, I really enjoyed how Barry Allen meets younger 18-year-old Barry Allen mm -hmm. um, and kind of become like brotherly friends with each other. Yeah, like an older brother. However, what doesn't make sense to me is he tries to give this Barry Allen powers and in doing so, he also gets struck by lightning. So he somehow loses his powers and he has his powers lost for a majority of the movie. Mm -hmm. And during most of that time, I was really bored because... With uh, his character in particular, yeah. and you weren't bored with everything going on around him. I was bored with his character because it kind of felt like he didn't really matter anymore in his own movie. He didn't get to do anything until he finally got his powers back and could do something. This is very much like Flashpoint. They take away Flash's powers for part of the movie, mm -hmm. for part of the story. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like nearly as long, though, and the reason he loses his powers in Flashpoint is because he changed the past. So he creates a new reality where he's in that reality, mm -hmm. but the accident never happened. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But him creating a new reality where because of a joke, because the 
other Barry won't sit down on the damn chair and just get the lightning to hit him, he loses his powers. That was another one of those weird jokes during a serious moment. It was a weird joke used to make the movie more serious by upping the stakes by having him lose his powers. Michael Keaton in this movie was having fun the entire time. I loved Michael Keaton. I could tell he wanted to be here. He's given some interviews about this movie, and he basically said he came back because he thought it would be really fun. Yeah, I and loved his character. He had fun. I can tell he had fun, and he did a good job. Until they gave a big fuck you and killed him twice. That was weird, but I do want to offer a different viewpoint to that. But how come he's not allowed to live, but we can bring back Ezra's mom? I mean, we can bring back the Flash's mom. I don't know. Um, I, I can't answer that. Because oh, okay. I, I feel like the movie doesn't fully make sense. Yeah. But... One thing I really liked about Batman in this movie is they showed him directionless. They showed a Batman who crime improved in Gotham, mm -hmm. and he didn't need to be Batman anymore. Mm -hmm. So at a certain point, he's just like, well, there's nothing for me to do. Mm -hmm. So he just becomes a recluse. Ben Affleck's Batman in the beginning talks about how a lot of scars and pain actually define who you are. Mm -hmm. They will stay with you, and sometimes trying to get rid of those things makes things worse. It changes who you are as a person into a worse person mm -hmm. because you didn't develop in the same way. Mm -hmm. And then later on, Michael Keaton's Batman talks about the same thing. And he basically says, you know, I lost my parents too. I don't even fully know if I know who I am without that pain. Mm -hmm. And you can see that because mm -hmm. he lost his way. And so when he wasn't needed anymore, he just kind of hung out in his house and drank and ate and didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was really interesting to see him come back and become Batman again. And really enjoy it. But part of watching him, not to make this a negative, made me feel like you could have done that plot in a Keaton Batman movie where you could have explored his character even more, or you could have cut down on Ezra's time or something like that mm. in the movie and explored Keaton more. And it could have been an even more interesting character study on what happens to a Bruce Wayne that's not needed anymore. Mm -hmm. And then when he was needed, very quickly you can see that he was happy again. You know, when he was, um, after he helps save Supergirl and bring her out, he's in his house and he's stitching up his arm because mm -hmm. he got just destroyed, but he's happy. And he's smiling because he's happy that he had something to do, like, some purpose. Yeah, yeah, because he had a purpose again. And yeah. in the end, you know, I know you didn't like his death. You got mad at it. I was. I didn't like his first death. And then they try and reverse it and he dies again. I liked his second death more. I felt like that was more honorable. I really liked how he says the same thing to Barry that the Ben Affleck Batman says. Mm -hmm. You know, because Ben's Batman at the beginning, you know, Barry's talking to him about trying to fix things. He's trying to, he even talks to him about trying to fix the Waynes. Mm -hmm. He says, I could save your parents too. But you could also tell it bothered him because when Barry's like, well, do you want to get a bite to eat or something? You can see that the Ben Affleck Batman is kind of upset and he's like, ah, not this time, kid. Maybe next time. Mm -hmm. And he leaves. Mm -hmm. When Michael Keaton's Batman is dying, and I thought this was good writing, he's, you know, Barry says, we can help you. We can save you. And he says, not this time, kid. Maybe next time. You know, because he's saying like, maybe somewhere out there, there is a universe where I'm fine, basically, and you can help me. But in this one, this is it. I'm old. I'm done. I helped. I went out like a hero. But this is all I can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, the dude died fighting a Kryptonian and he beat his ass. Yeah. Like, so that was insanity. And it was really cool what they did with Keaton's character. I'm fine with, with how he died. Um, I'm fine with it too, but it just doesn't seem like he was supposed to die in this movie. No, it didn't. And that's the problem that I had with it is that a lot of things that happened in the movie, even things I liked, felt like they weren't supposed to happen because they did show all these different you know, like the Nick Cage Superman universe, and they showed all these different multiverse universes. I want to view it as this, call it headcanon. I want to view it as Batman died and Sasha's Supergirl died, and that sucks ass because they were awesome. Mm -hmm. But they died to teach Barry a lesson mm -hmm. that was a powerful lesson. Then when he fixed the timeline, the DCEU went back to the way it should have been. Mm -hmm. The 89 universe went back to the way it should have been mm -hmm. instead of being mashed together. Mm -hmm. Keaton Batman is out there and he's still alive. I want to view it that way because even though it's wishful thinking, I want to look at this and say, this is them saying goodbye to the DCEU, even though they didn't. I liked the DCEU for what it was, mixed bag and all. And I liked the 89 universe for what it was. We'll leave it there. But I feel like instead of it really being that, which I want it to be, it was what you said it was, 
that somewhere in the middle of the movie, James Gunn came in mm -hmm. as the new management and said, listen, I'm making a new universe. I don't I, care about the DCEU anymore. I understand we have to release this still. Let's make it rot. No, like not let's, let's make- Let's let the DCEU rot in hell. Basically let it go. Yeah. You know, it, it felt like somewhere in the middle, new management came in and said like, listen, we're not going anywhere with this anyway. Just let it go and leave it open-ended. I thought Supergirl's death was really lame every single time it happened. Yes. She got stabbed once. I also wanted to mention too, for one of the things that I actually really liked, as I noticed- a lot of people online saying, this movie had too much Ezra Miller in it. And I realize now what they were saying, it's because obviously Ezra Miller was kind of like in it twice. However, I thought both Barry Allens played off of each other really well. And I thought they were really interesting. And I really actually liked the Dark Flash stuff that they tried to introduce. It's just, I feel like Dark Flash should have been in the movie more. This felt to me like the Batman v Superman theater cut, but where for me, I left and I was like, I enjoyed that. Here's the list of the things I like. Here's the list of the things I don't like. Wow, those lists are pretty much equal in length. Mm -hmm. Why do I feel this way? Like what, what, what went half, wrong? What half direction is this? Yeah. And that's kind of what I felt like with this movie where there was a lot I liked. Sasha, I was so excited. I would love a movie with just Sasha's Supergirl. She was badass. She kicked yeah. ass. She was so cool. Sasha was and awesome. Ezra Miller did a really amazing job in this movie, in my opinion. I can't believe that we feel that way, but I feel the same way. And I, I... The range playing Barry Allen, both undeveloped and developed Barry Allen, in my opinion, was incredible. Because you could tell they were two different people. And I, uh, the reason I brought up Ezra Miller is because there's a lot of people who say, Jay... How can you go support an Ezra Miller movie, but you won't support Amber Heard and Aquaman? You're a hypocrite. I believe that unless there is irrefutable proof of things that have been done, I don't know. Maybe that's naive of me. It looks like this person was using a lot of drugs and got in an altercate or like a couple altercations with people because this person was so high on drugs. That's messed up. That's stupid. But... My dad used to suffer from alcoholism, which is a choice to get into. I will mm -hmm. absolutely admit that. And he never hit me or anything like that, but he made some dumb choices. And when he kicked alcohol, he was a different man. Yeah, well, and, and that's a choice you make too, is, is kicking that stuff and becoming a better person. And Ezra, just like all of us, deserves a chance to change. There were allegations of like grooming children and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of stuff that if it comes out that happened, I wash my hands of you. That, that's I don't pretty care. bad. I don't care anymore. I want nothing to do with but you. But there's no proof of it. And it seems like this person is genuinely trying to be a better person. James Gunn, all the people surrounding this movie, including Andy Machete or whatever his name is, the director, and all these people have said that this person is going to therapy, mm -hmm. getting help, trying to change. Well, you know, also, that there is actual redemption being sought and that the worst things didn't happen because I have no proof of them. And also, it kind of sounds like Ezra is actually trying to change because this person hasn't been in the media pulling any guns on anyone or talking about Parcheesi at all for months. And all over the social media, it's always, we need to let people grow. People need to change. We need to hold them accountable now. And then we need to let them change and become better. But then oh. as soon as somebody tries to change, we're still holding them accountable. <laughs> and my difference with Amber Heard is I've seen no accountability. I've seen no acceptance of accountability. She is not no, trying to change. No admittance of wrong. But what I'm trying to say is for me going to this movie, I shouldn't even have to justify this movie. Mm -hmm. I, I can watch whatever the fuck I want. Mm -hmm. But for me, because there were people calling me a hypocrite in the one video and saying like, oh, you're full of shit for going to see this movie, but not that one. Mm -hmm. Look, one, I'm not as interested in Aquaman anyway. Two, this was one of my only times in my life I could see Michael Keaton play Batman on a screen. That's true. That was really important. Because also, I grew up with that character. And three, I personally don't know what happened. I didn't get proof of the worst things. And I'm hoping that change is happening. I'm, gen I'm genuinely hoping Ezra is trying to be a better person because I haven't seen anything saying that they haven't been. Whereas I have seen plenty saying that Amber is still going around being Amber. One more thing I wanted to mention that I really liked in this movie is something that really, really impacted me is all of the stuff that had to do with Barry Allen's mom. All of that stuff really made me start to cry, especially the part where Barry saw his mom in the supermarket one last time and gave her a hug when he was trying to fix everything. Mm -hmm. I, I really teared up at that part. It, it meant a lot to me and that was one of the that was one of the parts of the movie where I felt like somebody really put their heart and soul into that part of the story. And there was a lot of different parts in the story where I feel like somebody really, really, really tried. 
And then there was a lot of other parts where they didn't try as hard, where it felt like somebody had their hand in the cookie jar a little too much. And that's what made me sad. I always think about, my father died of cancer about three years ago. And I remember when I was a kid, my mom and I tried to get him to take his health more seriously. And he was so scared of hospitals that he wouldn't. Because in his mind, if he went, they would find something and his reality would crumble. Mm -hmm. And he thought that he was fine. I can't tell you how many times I've thought about if I could just go back and warn him. Mm -hmm. If I could just go back and tell my dad, you need to take this seriously. You need to think about this. If I just go back and change this one thing, yeah, it I, could change my entire life. And I've thought about that so many times of like, even if I couldn't do much, if I could just go back and leave a note. And Barry does that in this movie. And I think that's what so, was so impactful to me, to you, and to a lot of other people, is it seemed like this story was going to go in a really hopeful, heartwarming direction. And it felt like the very end with the George Clooney stuff kind of just put a, a knife in it. it it just kind of felt like weird defeatism they too. kept talking about hope in this movie supergirl had to make a big point about what the house of l's symbol meant michael keaton's batman he talked about hope mm -hmm. and he talked about how barry gave him that again because mm -hmm. he had lost his way in life he had just become a recluse yeah because he didn't have any purpose uh -huh. then you have the other barry who's just kind of taking everything for granted just like what bruce had said at the beginning that without that tragedy barry wouldn't be barry bruce even at the beginning talked about hope the ben affleck batman there's nothing with you that's broken mm -hmm. you are who you are and by justice league one thing that i thought was really powerful is that bruce is kind of inspired and the whole reason he's trying to put together the Justice League and help is because he's like, wow, I was a big fuck up. I was murdering people. Mm -hmm. I lost hope. Mm -hmm. I, just, I figured, you know what? Everybody just deserves to die. They're all scum and I'm a criminal too. And one thing I really liked about him at the beginning of this movie and one reason I wish I saw more of him was he sits there and he tells Barry, there's nothing broken about you. We are who we are. I've made my mistakes and you're a hero and you matter to me. And there's all this hope throughout the movie but then at the end, after Barry is forced to give up some of that hope, but gain different hope, you know, he gives up the hope of, I can fix my mom, and instead realizes, I can have hope going forward, and instead of trying to screw with everything in the past and ruin everything, I can make the future better. Mm -hmm. They turn it into a joke. Yeah. They turn it into a, look, George Clooney from Batman and Robin is here. Isn't that funny? It's not funny. It, it's, it, this was a serious, like, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be like a stick in the mud, but this was a movie with serious themes that matter to a lot of people. And then you turn it into like a bad MCU humor thing. And I love the MCU. Look, I have a high tolerance for MCU humor. I cried twice. And then the end is like, just kidding. Fuck the DCU. Yeah, it didn't matter. You guys None all suck. Matter. <laughs> Thanks for coming. It felt like this entire movie was supposed to be a big piece about hope and things like that, and and make uh, a point, like a, a really deep theme. And it felt like it was supposed to be something that was written with a lot of love and deep thinking. And then it got messed with so much that it lost a lot of that. But you can still see glimmers of it throughout the movie. And it makes me sad because it kind of makes me feel like there was some writer out there who, who really met, wanted to make something important with this movie and it got skewed. I think that's why I both really loved parts of this movie and, and really didn't like a lot of parts of this movie. And I feel like it should have introduced the new universe. And I feel like it should have continued with that hope if they were gonna have zod and dark flash show up like have these villains show up they should have been in the movie a little bit more and mattered a little bit more it kind of felt like the whole big villain that barry was fighting the whole time was himself messing with time and even though that is kind of deep it also felt like, then why did you introduce these other things too because they you just half-baked them i've never left a movie and been more frustrated because I wanted to like it more. I loved parts and I really disliked parts. Like it's such a mixed bag for me. My biggest problem with this movie, and it's also my closing thought is, this movie felt pointless. And I'm going to elaborate on that. The reason it feels that way is because they make you care a lot about Barry Allen, who before didn't get very much development in my opinion. They make you care a lot about all of the stuff surrounding him and his family and all of that 
and what universe he's going to end up in, then they just kind of get rid of him because you know from the past that like they're not making another Shazam movie because Shazam didn't do well. They're not going to make another Flash movie because Probably. This, this movie didn't do well and there's a lot of people who are doing backlash against it. So it just kind of felt to me like instead of an ending to the DCEU, it felt like it could have been a really good new beginning uh, and instead we got like a, a weird semicolon, like I said in the beginning, forget about it, we're just gonna forget about all of that and move on to Blue Beetle. We don't know about, you know, Ezra's Flash, and it's like, if those characters are back- We also don't know what universe we're even gonna be in now. And if those characters are back, it feels pointless to me because then why didn't you transition into that universe with this movie? Mm -hmm. I don't regret watching the movie. Um, it felt like it didn't go anywhere. Yeah, I don't really know what to think. I'm sure it sounds like we don't like the movie, I like a lot of the movie. I also dislike quite a bit of the movie. Mm -hmm. It was just so bizarre. It, it felt like a zigzag. Like it felt like it was going one way and then it went another way and then it went another way. And then I was like, what? What's going on here? I just really wanted to like this movie. I, I was really enjoying Barry Allen. What happened? Okay. Well, that's it then. That's the credits. It's funny because we were pretty happy with the movie up until the last 20 minutes. Yeah. And then the last 20 minutes after it ended, you and I looked at each other and we were like, how? What? That was a really bad ending. What happened? You know, I'm really hoping that they bring back this Barry Allen and make it feel like this stuff mattered at least. But if you don't do that, then what was the point of this movie? We do have another channel, Degenerate Plays, where we play through games together. Jill has her own channel where she reviews stuff, which is Magical Jill. Both of those channels are down in the description. Then I do also have a horror channel called The King of Creepy, which is also down in the description. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to help support any of those things or join the channel memberships, that means a lot to us and we appreciate you very much. We hope you have a fantastic day. And as always, everyone, check out Enchanted Glamour. That's true. That's Jill's business. Check out Enchanted Glamour. And as always, everyone, Stay